The Earth's climate has changed many times over the past several million years. And in fact, there were periods that were much warmer than now, even though we are currently experiencing a period of global warming. These periods of prehistoric climate change have not only affected the way of life for species that lived back then, but they also hold clues to how our planet might respond in the future. Get ready for some super exciting stories. We're diving into a series on climate change, exploring how our planet's climate has shifted over time. In the first video of this series, we talked about what the evidence from tree rings, ice cores, and other sources tells us about the history of Earth's climate. And if you haven't watched it yet, I highly recommend checking it out after this video. In today's video, we will be looking at four major periods of prehistoric climate change and their effects on life on Earth. The warm periods during the Pleistocene epoch. During the last two million years, the Earth's climate has cycled between glacial and interglacial periods, with the latter being much warmer than our current climate. During an interglacial period, the average temperature worldwide is around 4 to 6 degrees Celsius higher than during glacial periods. During these warm periods, more of Earth's fresh water is stored in the oceans rather than in ice sheets covering the continents, meaning sea levels are higher than during the cold periods. According to a study published in Nature Geoscience in 2018, one such warm period began around 130,000 years ago during the Middle Pleistocene epoch. At the time, humans, known as Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and Denisovans, were spread across Eurasia. Between then and around 120,000 years ago, Earth experienced a sudden and dramatic shift towards warmth. Within just a century or so, temperatures rose by around 4 degrees Celsius above the baseline for the preceding interglacial period. Scientists believe that the abrupt increase in temperature caused massive ice sheet melt and rising sea levels. This, in turn, resulted in freshwater entering the North Atlantic Ocean, which disrupted the Gulf Stream and caused even more melting. It was a positive feedback loop that led to a runaway greenhouse effect and rapidly changing climate. Compared to the abrupt end of the last ice age, which occurred within just a few centuries, the end of the previous interglacial was relatively slow to unfold. Researchers say that during this period of rapid climate change, the meltwater pouring into the ocean reduced the amount of carbon dioxide absorbed by the northern hemisphere by 20%. That's because when meltwater mixes with seawater, it forms a layer of fresh water on the ocean surface that prevents the exchange of gases with the atmosphere below. As a result, less carbon dioxide could be taken out of the atmosphere and stored in the ocean, leading to a runaway greenhouse effect that trapped more heat in the lower atmosphere. Because of the slower pace of climate change, species had more time to adapt and migrate. This allowed humans to move into new territories as the climate warmed, while large mammals migrated poleward to cooler regions. But as the warming continued, those same mammals would have faced shrinking habitats. Humans may have exacerbated this problem by hunting large animals, causing some species to go extinct. For example, in Australia, the megafauna disappeared around 40,000 years ago. Some researchers think this was due to both climate change and human activity. As the climate started to cool again around 116,000 years ago, rainfall patterns shifted. In Africa, this led to the formation of new lakes and the expansion of existing ones, including the modern-day Sahara. Eventually, this cooling caused the beginning of the last glacial period, which lasted until around 11,700 years ago. The last interglacial period, while the previous interglacial saw a gradual decline towards the onset of the last glacial period. The most recent warm period started out quite cold. Approximately 130,000 years ago, ice sheets covered parts of Europe, North America, and Greenland. But as temperatures began to rise around 15,000 years ago, the ice sheets shrank dramatically. During the last interglacial period, which lasted from about 130,000 to 116,000 years ago, global mean temperatures were up to 2 to 3 degrees higher than today. Rising temperatures led to rising sea levels, which were approximately 6 to 7 meters higher than today, 
Not only did this inundate modern-day Florida and the low-lying regions of Bangladesh and the Maldives, but it also flooded river valleys across the northern hemisphere. These floods may have had an impact on the course of human history. For example, rising sea levels could have cut off the land bridge connecting Siberia and North America and forced humans and large animals to migrate southwards. Other research suggests that the rising sea levels may have drowned coastal forests, which led to a decrease in carbon storage on land and possibly contributed to a positive feedback loop that led to further warming. Humans were not alone in adapting to the changing climate. During the last interglacial period, plants migrated to higher altitudes. In Europe, the warmer climate also allowed species typically found in milder climates further north. In Siberia, a palm tree that today is only found in China grew as far north as 55 degrees latitude. Meanwhile, in Alaska, a shrub now restricted to central Mexico grew near the Arctic Circle. The sudden shift towards colder temperatures around 11,700 years ago caused the glaciers to advance once again, which in turn lowered sea levels. The glaciers reached their maximum extent around 18,000 years ago. Since then, temperatures have been rising again, bringing us to where we are today, warm periods before the Pleistocene. The past few million years is not the only time that Earth experienced periods of warmth. In fact, scientists have identified seven periods in the past 20 million years when temperatures were higher than today. One notable example is the mid-Miocene climatic optimum that took place around 17 million years ago. During this period, global temperatures were around 3 degrees Celsius higher than today, and carbon dioxide levels were 40% higher. The concentration of water vapor in the atmosphere was likely even higher thanks to the warmer temperatures. This created a runaway greenhouse effect that was similar to the one that ended the previous interglacial period. However, it lasted for several hundred thousand years, much longer than the rapid shift in the previous interglacial period. Another warm period occurred around 20 million years ago when Antarctica was largely ice-free. The region was instead covered in a temperate rainforest, which absorbed huge amounts of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In fact, during the early and middle Miocene, the growth of rainforests in the northern hemisphere removed almost half of the available carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. However, as the northern hemisphere moved out of the tropics and into higher latitudes around 15 million years ago, the rainforests began to shrink. This coincided with an increase in global temperatures as well as a decline in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels. Possibly due to the uplift of the Tibetan Plateau, which provided more surface area for carbon dioxide to be stored as rock. The Eocene Thermal Maximum Perhaps the warmest period in the past 20 million years was the Eocene Thermal Maximum that peaked around 56 million years ago. During this time, temperatures were up to 11 degrees Celsius higher than today, and carbon dioxide levels were roughly twice as high. This extreme heat led to widespread wildfires across North America and Europe. Meanwhile, in the Southern Hemisphere, there was an explosion of flowering plants known as angiosperms. At the time, the continent of Antarctica was still covered in rainforest and connected to South America via a land bridge. But by the end of the Eocene epoch, flowering plants had spread throughout the entire continent, allowing it to flourish with a variety of plant and animal life. So, from a global perspective, the Eocene Thermal Maximum was indeed a very hot topic. But there's still much that scientists do not know about this period. Because it predates the evolution of primates, there are no well-preserved fossils from the Eocene Thermal Maximum. So our understanding of the period is limited to the sparse fossil record of mammals, pollen, and marine sediments. Although Earth has experienced periods of warmth in the past, none of them occurred under conditions like the ones that exist today. For example, humans have not only increased the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration from 280 parts per million to over 415 parts per million. Today, but we have also altered the composition of the atmosphere by introducing pollutants such as water vapor and nitrous oxide. Additionally, 
we are continuing to burn fossil fuels and release greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, unlike any other species that has come before us. All of this means that while the past can provide clues about the future of climate change, it cannot tell us exactly what will happen. Understanding past changes in climate not only helps us better predict what might happen in the future, but it also gives us a better idea of how the world might respond. I, by learning from the past, we can work towards mitigating the worst effects of climate change and protecting the delicate balance of our planet. So what do you think? Were you surprised by what you learned in this video? If so, let me know down in the comments below. I also want to know what you think humans can do to mitigate the worst effects of climate change. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching. See you next time.